My name is Laura McKeever and the book that I chose for this project is called How to Manage Your Time by Mike Clayton. I chose this book because I am a very spontaneous person and I love to do things very last minute which usually leads to me being super stressed out and causing others around me stress as well. I also procrastinate the things that I should be making priorities such as my family, my friends, going to the gym and also making time to do homework outside of school. Um, my goal to get out of this project is to become more organized and to reduce stress and to manage my time more wisely, which I know will free up my time for other daily activities. So for my first day, it says, do the basics of time manage. Wake up first thing you do in the morning and create a to-do list. As I get each one done, I will check it off and go to the next one. This will help me get what I want and to stay organized so I don't become stressed when it becomes piled up at the end of the day. So I have this calendar for each day of the week and I'm going to fill out today, which is Monday, um, right now. Oh. It's day two and the book talks about the importance of alone time, so I'm gonna go for a walk. So it's day three, my second step is to start a gratitude journal and I'm gonna write five things I'm grateful for. So for day four, I'm gonna go to a coffee shop and do some homework so I'm not so stressed out the next day when everything is due. In chapter one, it states a negative attitude to your past means that the past dominates your present in a destructive way. My second quote is, when you have no access to the time, the only time that there is, is now. As I finished chapter one and read all chapter two, I highlighted the importance of ways to tune in the moment and break down how to measure the way I actually use my time. This starts with valuing my time and recognizing how it is being spent. Me and my friends are all going to the Cody Johnson concert this Friday and I will split my days of the week to get each thing done that I need to do to prepare. This will ensure that I don't get crammed last second trying to get all these things done at once. So we're gonna start ordering our tickets right now online. So the concert this is this Friday and we um, are gonna go get the tickets right now. So we just got our tickets and we are so excited to go this Friday. For day two, I'm gonna go to Target and I'm gonna find something to wear for the concert. So for day three, the concert's all the way in Prescott, so I'm gonna go to the store and get some snacks for the long drive. So it's day four now and it's the day of the concert. <laughs> In chapter two, it states when you have a strong reason for doing something because you can see the meaning or purpose of it, then you can commit to it. Then getting it done will no longer seem like a chore. No matter how unpleasant it is, instead it will feel like a mission. My second quote states, discipline goes further than grading your teeth and, do and doing what you need to do. And it is about being punch punctual and keeping your promises and remaining courage. Day one, week three, it says there's a great importance in tuning in and appreciating where you are at and what, do you, what you are doing. Today I will go for a walk and this will help me tune in the moment and reflect on my day. For day two, I will take today and give myself a layout of how my time is being spent. I will create a time long by the hour and write down that I will be doing each hour of the day. When my day is complete, I will reflect on it and how accurate and how much I have done. So for day three, in the last part of the chapter, it talks about creating a daily routine that will later become a habit. One positive thing that I want to include in my daily routine comes from week one and journaling five things I am grateful for in, at the end of each day. In order to form a routine, 
I need to do it a few times in a row until it becomes natural. So I will document myself for three straight days, writing five things that I am grateful for. For day four on page 13, it gets a few steps to de detoxify your past. Step one is to call or write a letter to somebody and tell them how much you love and appreciate them. This will help me show gratitude to the people who mean so much to me by reflecting on the past with a positive outcome. So for my first day of day four, as I was reading through the last few chapters, it highlights the importance of taking control of your time and strategies to, do, to use other people to help manage it. The author wrote about the OATS plan that stands for outcomes, outcomes, activities, time, and schedule. Throughout the week, I will do all of these. For my first quote, it states, heads up, polish up your binoculars, take a look around, then, it, then on to the next step. My second quote says, preventing the feeling of procrastination is an essential skill by focusing on what is, what is important. You are less likely to want to put off tasks. So for day one, step three is spend time with people who, you're, who are positive about the past and optimistic about the future. This is super important because surrounding myself around the people who are the opposite that complain about things and who are still mad about the past can feed into mine. For day two, I will think through my day and what I want to achieve. First thing this morning, I will settle on four things and, when, and what I should achieve during that part of the day. Four, I will pick to do an activity during the day and I will estimate about the time it will take me so I can plan out the rest of my day. I'm going to go for a walk and I estimate it'll take me 30 minutes. My first quote states, risks are characterized by an adverse consequences and the probability and more likely that something is to go wrong. And the harsher the consequences, the, the greater the cost that you must associate with the risk. My second quote says, if you have a golden hour, then use it. 